The third board of the set again illustrates how responder after a reverse has to communicate to opener that they have now sufficient values with which to go to game. Pass. One club from West, 12 to 19. Clubs are my longest suit, may or may not be balanced. Pass. One heart from responder, six or more points, four or more hearts, forcing for one round. Pass. Two diamonds. Again, the three criteria to spot a reverse is on display. Opener has bid two separate suits. The second suit has been bid at the second level. The second suit diamonds is higher in rank than clubs. Therefore, that is a reverse. Or if you think about it, the barrier after one club has been that has been opened is two clubs. If West makes a bid higher than the barrier, they are showing strength. Pass. Because East has 10 points, they have to communicate the, that to partner. If they bid two hearts, that would show weakness. And unless partner had 18 or 19 points, they won't have enough to make game. So they must jump to three hearts. And a jump to three hearts guarantees six cards in the suit. If you don't have six cards in the suit with enough points for game, you don't jump to three hearts. You can bid fourth suit forcing, which, would, which will be the demonstration of another seminar after Christmas. Three hearts, pass, four hearts. Hopefully it's a fit. Pass, pass, pass. And again, when the lead is made, we have to analyze where are our potential losers, where are our potential winners. They lead a spade, the king. Oh, sorry, a small spade. Yeah. Fourth best of their longest and strongest. If we play the jack of spades, we will lose a trick. If we play the ace of spades, we win control. When we win control, we have to, again, think about the losers that we can lose. Well, we now have a guaranteed spade loser. We have at least a one heart loser, if not two. And we have potentially two club losers, depending on the position of the king and jack of clubs. However, we do have an extra winning diamond. So before we touch trumps, we should try to get rid of our loser in clubs, knowing that if it's roughed at any stage, the diamond, we were going to lose the spade trick. So when we play the queen of diamonds and throwing away our spade, we're lucky and relieved that everybody follows and we don't have a problem. What we should now do is finesse the heart, hoping that the heart wins. That's a disaster. What do they play? When they play a spade, because we've thrown it away, we're able to rough it. And now when we play the ace of hearts, if it's three, two, we only have to lose one more heart. And now we can finesse the club hoping that the king and the jack is on our left. And we shouldn't finesse the queen. We should finesse the 10, because this is a way we can make extra tricks. And when we lead a diamond and rough in our hand, if they over rough, there's nothing they can play that we can't retain control. If they play a spade, over rough, please, and play a spade. And we can repeat the finesse, thereby not losing any club trick and making 11 tricks. The double finesse in clubs is an extra chance. Playing the 10, even if it loses to the king, you still only make your contract. Even if it loses to the jack, you repeat the finesse later on. 
Playing to the 10 gives you the chance of 11 tricks when the heart finesse is wrong and the club finesses are right. If the heart finesse was on side, we would have been able to make 12 tricks on this board. The last board of reverse bidding shows the value of strength showing bids to be able to bid more, uh, uh, not aggressively, more intelligently to grand slam or slam. Pass. Now we have a maximum reverse. This is a game going reverse that we will always drive to game no matter what our, what our partner does after our reverse. One diamond. Pass. One spade, four or more spades, six or more points, pass. Two hearts, forcing for one round, five diamonds, four hearts, 16 plus points, no support for spades, pass. Four diamonds. This has to be strength. This has to be a slam try. They didn't show weakness by bidding three diamonds. They didn't investigate three no trump and they've jumped past three no trump, therefore in slam try investigation. Over this, I have all the information I need to, fi to find out what I want by either bidding Roman keycard Blackwood, which we won't do today, or ordinary Blackwood ace asking. Pass. Again, explaining my bid. Over four no trump, my partner will respond, showing me how many aces they have, and they will explain how many aces they have to their opponents when they do it. Five clubs is none or all. Five diamonds is one, five hearts is two, five spades is three. When they bid five spades, I know we have no losers in spades, no losers in hearts, no losers in diamonds and potentially one loser in clubs. But I can find out if my partner has the king of clubs by asking him, pass. If they've none, they bid six clubs. If they've won, they bid six diamonds. If they've two, they bid six hearts. They can't have two. If they've three, they bid six spades. They can't have three. They bid six diamonds showing one. Now I know I have no loser in clubs, no loser in spades, no loser in diamonds, and no loser in hearts. How do I know I have no loser in hearts? Because my partner can't have four hearts. Therefore, if my partner only has three hearts, I can rough the 13th, uh, the three of hearts for my 13th trick. Pass, seven diamonds, pass, pass. The lead against a grand slam is nearly always going to be a trump if they have two or three little ones. But if they have a strong sequence, leading their sequence can help them as well. Queen of clubs is the lead, showing a strong sequence. Now, if I count my guaranteed tricks, I have five diamonds, two spades is seven, three hearts is ten, and two clubs is twelve. Twelve tricks is not thirteen. There's no point in roughing clubs. There's no point in roughing spades. But there is a point in roughing hearts. But before I rough hearts, I should check in case the trumps are divided either 2-2 two, two or 3-1, in which case I can draw all of the trumps. So I win the club with the ace. It would be wrong now to play the ace of diamonds, because if the suit is divided for nil, the ten of diamonds could be in the east hand or the west hand. And if I play the ace of diamonds, I won't be able to, I might not be able to rough the heart because they may be able to over rough me. The right way to play the diamonds is to play a small one to the king, queen and jack to find out the way the suit is divided. When East shows out and the sneaky East followed with a heart, a red card to hopefully make me not be paying attention and think that it was a diamond, but I noticed that it was a heart. Now I know that West has the 10 of diamonds. It is a marked card. 
I can't afford to draw all of the trumps because if I draw all of the trumps, I will lose the last card with a small heart. Now, because I know West has the 10 of diamonds and I know that if I don't uh, do something with the little heart, I will lose it at the end because it won't grow up to be a winner unless one of my opponents is incompetent and throws the wrong card. So now I play the ace of hearts, small from the dummy, the king of hearts, small from the dummy, and I play the small heart. And I don't rough small, because if I rough small and they over rough, I'm going to go down in my contract. I'm going to look foolish. Over rough. So I won't do that. What I will do is rough the small heart with the big diamond. That can't be over roughed because I know where the 10 of diamonds is. And when they discard, I'm very happy now. I lead the eight of diamonds. And I know where the Ten of Diamonds is. I don't need to waste the Queen or the Jack. And I draw all of the trumps. And when I play the Queen of Trumps, throwing away the spade, I can claim the rest of the tricks. Thinking about where the cards are and how you can cope with them is important. Playing the Ace of Diamonds early means you can't rough with the Ace of Diamonds later. When you have touching honours in one hand and one honour in the other, it's nearly always correct to play one honour from the touching honours to find out what's going on. And that would most definitely be true when you have length opposite length. Seven diamonds making 2,140, a beautiful score. How many points do we have between us? Only 34, I think. But that is enough to make 33, is it? Nine and six is 15, 18, 33 points. But the value of the diamond suit gives us the extra trick, which gives us the extra bonus.